Hey everybody, Mike here. In this video, we're going to be pouring some concrete over existing concrete. Uh, we got a bunch of concrete to pour here on this project. In today's video, we're just going to be pouring a concrete ramp, which is part of the concrete patio that we're adding on to this place. So we got concrete on both sides of this ramp going in, and both of that is going to be concrete over concrete. So if you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe so you can come back and see us pouring more of this concrete patio. But today we're just going to get this concrete ramp done, so you're going to see how we can pour a sloped concrete ramp over an existing flat concrete patio. Now first thing we had to do is we came in and we formed it all up. As you can see we're about 12 inches thick there by the door and we're going down to about three and a half to four inches thick. So what the owner had here before is he had a he had a wooden ramp made out of pressure treated wood and that wasn't working out too well for him and he wanted to redo this whole space anyway. He's kind of remodeling the whole project, the whole building. So we decided just to pour him a nice concrete ramp going from about 12 inches thick to about 4 inches thick. And then when he gets done, he's going to re-landscape out around everything so it'll be a nice easy transition. Yeah, this is actually a part of a car dealership. So he drives cars in and out of that door to work on them, to restore them and stuff like that. So the concrete ramp is going to be a big, big uh, upgrade from what he had before. But when we pour concrete over concrete, when when we're pouring concrete this thick over existing concrete, there's not a heck of a lot of prep that we need to do. You know, we just clean it. If there's some major cracks or anything like that, we'll repair those. But for this particular job, the, you know, the old concrete patios underneath this were in, they were in pretty good shape. They were just kind of really old and, you know, the tops of them were really scaled and, and uh, peeling and popping and they just didn't look good and they weren't they weren't worth resurfacing in our opinion plus he had room to bring the grade up here a little bit anyway so we just decided to pour new concrete over the existing rather than try to resurface what was there now whenever you pour a steep slope in in concrete you got to pour the concrete pretty dry and it's got to be low slump, what we call low slump concrete. And that's what we're pouring here. We got probably about a three inch slump we're pouring to this concrete, which is pretty dry. And it's a lot, it's a lot drier than what we normally pour, that's for sure. But the good thing about pouring it this dry is it doesn't want to sag when you go to, when you go to screed it, as you'll see here in a minute. And if it does, you know, if you pour the concrete a little too wet, on a slope like this it's just going to want to sag it's just going to be harder to keep it in place and you might even have to wait a bit before you can screed it just to let it set up a little bit so you're much better off pouring it a little bit drier and then if you think you can add a little water to it once you get going then you could add a little bit to it then but the drier the better on a ramp like this you can see we're pulling up the wire as we go here getting it underneath getting some concrete underneath that wire we got fiber mesh in the concrete also so it there's two types of reinforcement and we're using a 4000 psi mix for this exterior concrete we always use 4000 for our exterior concrete we go through a lot of freeze thaw cycles in the winter we got about three months of winter here in maine so our concrete sees a lot of freezing and thawing 4,000 PSI holds up a lot better in uh, in winter months than a, like a regular 3,000 PSI would. Now what Darren's doing is he's taking our little pencil vibrator, the DeWalt pencil vibrator, and he's he's vibrating those edges to make sure they come out nice and smooth when we when we pull those forms because some of that edge is going to be exposed and you'll be able to see it. And we didn't want any rock holes or or air pocket holes or anything like that, so. That pencil vibrator is a, is a real good tool to have if you're in the concrete business. I have a link for it down in the description below so you can check it out. So what we're doing is we get most of the concrete poured out on this ramp. It's about 24 feet long and about 11, 11 and a half feet wide. 
Now we're getting the edges just mag floated after daring gets them vibrated. We'll get all our edges mag floated, you know, bring up the cream, push down the rocks all the way around the edges. That's just going to make the probe process a little bit easier finishing. And then we'll get the screed and we'll start screeding it right here. As you can see, that concrete doesn't move very well on its own. It's pretty dry. But you can also see it's not sagging at all either. It's staying right in place. So that's going to be that's going to be a bonus, especially when we go to bull float it. Sometimes when you bull float it, the bull float will even make the concrete sag if it's too wet on a slope like this. So keeping it good and dry might be a little more work initially when you're pouring it like this, but it's actually a lot less work in the long run because it all stays in place. You can see Darren pulling that back. <laughs> it's pretty dry. We got it a little bit high there, so we had to stop for a second, let Darren pull some back, and then we can continue to screed. Now the next part to this video, this will be a, a two-part series to the ramp. I'll show you how we're gonna finish this. So make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell notification so you'll be notified when you can uh, come back and see us finishing this this concrete because you're going to want to know how to finish it too. Whenever you pour concrete you just usually don't leave it bowl floated and we're going to be putting a nice finish on this so you'll be able to get to see just how we do it all the steps. So make sure you subscribe and come back to see that. Also if you're getting any value out of this video you know if you if you're if you're wondering how to pour concrete over concrete if you can how you how to do it you know you're getting some value out of this please hit that like button smash that like button for me and that helps me with YouTube YouTube ranks videos based on your input you know your comments your your likes so that would help rank the video better too if you could if you could do that and let me know if you if you're watching this video you must be thinking of pouring some type of concrete over over concrete that you have let me know what your project is is it a patio is it a garage floor is it a uh, is it some type of exterior concrete like we're doing here? Let me know down in the comments what you're thinking of doing. And if you have any questions, maybe I could help you out with that. So we got it partially screeded. And you can see Eric's going back to bull float it. And it might take multiple passes in one spot to smoothen it out to where we, where we like it. And that's pretty normal. I got him a couple other bull float handles, so he bull floated it east to west, and then when we get done, we're going to bull float it the opposite direction, north to south, just to make sure we can get that surface as smooth as possible before we start finishing it. You can see how really dry that stuff is. It doesn't move very well at this slump. It's a good thing we can both screed from the outside. You know, we set those forms right to grade. And then we could just run the, that magnesium screed board right off the top of the forms on the outside. That really helped it out a lot too, getting this down. So what I'm doing is I'm just consolidating the concrete right here at the very end. You know, if they have a little bit of high left, I'll pull it out over the edge. And we'll get this finished screeded and then uh, we can get it both floated off nice and smooth. If you want any type of any type of uh, training or you want to learn how to do concrete like we do, you know, I've got my new private membership, the Concrete Underground, that you can check out down in the description below. You'll, you'll see a link for it. And I have all kinds of training videos in there, you know, similar to, to how to do something like this. There's videos on slabs, pouring concrete, finishing concrete, power trial on concrete, how to stamp concrete all types of training videos in there how to run a concrete business starting your own business so the concrete underground is the place to be if you want to if you want to learn or have a little bit higher education as far as concrete work you can see eric's going back and forth east to west on this and that bull floats pushing down the aggregate and bringing up the paste and smoothing it out the surface and that's what you need to do if you're going to put some type of finish on it. You know, we want to we want to put a finish on this that's not going to be slippery when it's wet. You know, that but it'll still be fairly easy to clean, keep clean, you know, with a either a hose, a pressure washer, or even maybe a leaf blower. 
So the finish will be coming up in part two of this series. Yeah, now Eric's going north to south. Get you can see it smoothed out pretty good with absolutely no sag at all. So if you're thinking of pouring concrete over concrete, you definitely can. We got more to do on this project over there to the right where that where that door is and that little seat swinging seat. We're gonna pour concrete over that. And then to the left of this ramp, there's another old concrete slab we're pouring concrete over the top of. So make sure you subscribe and come back and check that out. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.